Good day. My name is Gareth Newham. I head the Justice and Violence Prevention at the Institute for Security Studies based in Pretoria, South Africa. Today, the crime statistics for the financial year of 2016 and 2017 were released by the Minister of Police before Parliament in Cape Town. These statistics give us an idea of the overall national, provincial and station level trends for a variety of serious and violent crime categories that take place in South Africa every year. For us, the most important indicator of violent crime in South Africa is the murder statistic or the murder category. This is the most reliable category of crime because most murders can be independently verified. There is a dead body that you can count. In this case, unfortunately, for the fifth time in a consecutive row, fifth, fifth time consecutively, we have seen an increase in murder. So that since 2011 and 12, over the last five years, the numbers of murders have increased by 22%. That means that the risk of being murdered in South Africa is now 13, more than 13% higher than it was five years ago. This translates to almost 3,500 more murders in the last financial year than was the case five years ago. Most of these murders are of young men. About 42 out of the 50 murders that take place every day, the rest are of women and children. This is a particularly serious indicator of the failure of the government and indeed all of us to get on top of the violent nature of crime in South Africa. It is not a policing responsibility alone, however, but uh, we need to be looking at other kinds of interventions that intervene at a much more grassroots level to do with protecting children from violence so they do not grow up being violent when they are young adults. The second most important crime category we looked at today was that of aggravated robbery. Aggravated robbery occurs when there's a group or an individual who's usually armed with guns, firearms or knives, who attack people either walking in the streets, which is the biggest subcategory of aggravated robbery, or in their homes, in their places of work, small businesses, and of course inst instances like car hijacking. That crime again has gone up over 6% this year. This is alarming because since 2011-12, five years ago, the total category of aggravated robberies has increased by over 40 or 40%. This, stand, this crime now stands at 140,000 cases opened with the police last year, which is 40,000 more cases than was opened with the police five years ago. That means that every day in South Africa, there are 110 more armed attacks on people in the streets and in their homes and businesses than there were five years ago. This is particularly worrying because the police, if they effectively use their resources, particularly intelligence and detective services with backup from forensics, they can get on top of this crime very successfully. For example, in Gauteng between 2009 and 2011, the police, using a very clear strategy guided by crime intelligence, were successfully able to identify larger numbers of these gangs and the syndicates that buy and trade in stolen goods were goods that are stolen in robberies. Within two years, they had managed to increase the arrest and conviction rates, and car hijacking therefore dropped by 32%, business robbery by 19%, and house robberies by 20% between 2009 and 2011. In the last five years, the police budget, or six years, the police budget has gone up by 50%, currently staying at 87 billion rand. We know that the police have the resources, the skills, the expertise, the many men and women in uniform who understand policing and are able to get on top of these crimes. The single biggest failure, however, is that of inappropriate political interference in the South African Police Service. Starting with a president who seems to only appoint national commissioners of police who are not suited to the job, we've had five different people occupy the post of the South African Police Service National Commission in the last eight years. This has led the National Development Plan to identify the serial crisis of top management as a fundamental problem in policing in South Africa. Because every time a new person occupies that post, they restructure the top echelons so that the most highest component of the South African Police Service cannot work effectively, thereby giving the sufficient training, guidance, support, directives to the 195,000 odd people in the South African Police Service, most of which are working at station level. So this profound crisis of top management is the fundamental reason that the police are not able to get on top of our crime problem. There's also other forms of political interference in the police. Protect, promoting and protecting those that should not be in the police, for example. Lieutenant General Richard Mbluli has been suspended for six years as the head of the Crime Intelligence Division, despite facing prosecutions for murder and corruption. 
He has been protected from internal disciplinary hearing. The evidence against him is overwhelming and was used to fire his second in command back in 2014. But because he is apparently close to the president, they do not take moves to get rid of him and the crime intelligence capacity has seriously been undermined for the last five years. Moreover, politicians interfere in the police at provincial levels and at station levels. So the police are distracted from doing their jobs. They should only be following the law, the constitution and clear policies that are approved by government. So as so long as we have poor appointments of national commissioners and we have political interference, the South African Police Service will not be able to use its vast resources and know-how in order to get on top of the crime challenge. We therefore have a campaign to try and ask the President and the Cabinet to implement their own National Development Plan recommendations, which Cabinet formally adopted in 2012, which says that the top echelon, the, the National Commission of the Police and the Deputy National Commissioners, must be appointed in a transparent, merit-based competitive process, so that only the best possible man or woman who has integrity, who has the necessary skills, experience and expertise occupies these posts. This is the only way we will be able to see the police get on top of the crime challenge and that policing will improve in South Africa. So we hope that you will get onto our website or look at the Crime Hub and take the survey or go to Corruption Watch's website and take a survey which tells us what you think you would like to see as the qualities of a South African National Police Commissioner. Thank you for listening today.